Hey guys, John here. Today we're in pigments and I've gotten this question quite a few times is how we're going to add that typical vibrato on our mod wheel, right? So let's make a quick patch and kind of go through this how you probably would, right? So we're going to the analog. We have a saw wave. Let's add a square in there. Let's kind of make like a classic analog sound or something like that, right? Let's drop this down an octave, something like this here. Give it some unison. So we're kind of a big sound here. So if we go to our envelopes, let's increase our release. And now we need a filter. Let's go do something, I guess, like a Jupiter 8 and spring your cutoff down, resonance upright, and we'll do some modulation. Envelope 2 on the cutoff. Let's give a good amount. So I should bring this down, kind of something like that, and give a good amount. And then also increase the decay and the release for the envelope 2. Until we like it. We have something kind of like that, right? So we normally go to our effects and let's bring some of these down maybe. Let's add some chorus, right? Some chorus Juno 6. Maybe a little delay. It's fine for now. And some reverb. Okay, we have kind of a basic patch. I could EQ it, but we're just going to get to the point here. So basically, you have this thing going on. And you're like, I want some vibrato on this. So, you know, you would probably think grab the LFO, drag and drop to the fine tuning and go to our LFO and. Okay, we have our pitch working, but it's very slow and it's re-triggered by the poly keyboard, which we don't want. So we can go here and we go to free running, right? It's kind of doing its own thing. And there's increase from Hertz and then bring this to maybe higher fives, lower sixes, something like that. It's generally appropriate for, uh, for vibrato. I say, okay, cool, we have vibrato, but we have it all the time. And that can get kind of annoying. So basically what we need to do is the, what they call side chaining inside of pigments, right? So we go to the LFO tab here. And at the bottom, we're gonna see side chain. So we click this here and we say, okay, what do we want to side chain? What parameter, right, do we want to side chain this with? And if you wanna do the mod wheel, we have our selection right over here. Now keep in mind, you have a lot of other stuff to choose from. You can do it with macros if you'd like to as well. That's another option, absolutely. If you wanna map those to your MIDI keyboard and have the same kind of control, something to think about. So let's go to mod wheel for now because that's kind of the most basic, right? And my default is gonna be 0.5. And I'll show you kind of what's happening here. So our mod wheel, if we can go here to our keyboard, you see my mod wheel is moving around. All the way down, we still hear vibrato. All the way up. We still hear vibrato, but a little bit more. So what we need to do is bring this to one, right? So if our mod is all the way up, this is going to be our maximum depth. And if we bring it down, this is going to be zero. All right, so no modulation there. It's only once we start bringing in our mod wheel. That we kind of get something like that. Right, something kind of like that. So with this kind of concept, what we can do, so let's go to a new preset. And for example, let's go back to our analog. So let's say we want to do something like that with a filter cutoff. So we have an LFO, we drag and drop this here. And let's maybe make this a little bit faster. Let's go free running and maybe something, something kind of like that, right? Give us some resonance. Then we can hear what's going on. <clears throat> So now let's say we have the mod wheel used for the vibrato that we just did, but we want to control the same op the same option with a, uh, a macro. So what we need to do is let's go back to our LFO, which is going to be doing the modulation. Let's go to side chain. And then for this, we're going to go to, I guess, macro one. That might be kind of fine here. So let's label this uh, filter side chain, right? So we're going to go from 0.5 to all the way to the 1. So now you're going to see it's going to stop, right? So at default, when we're down here at 0.5, it's moving. But we bring it to the top, and it's going to stop. And it stops because we have no value here for our uh, first macro. And as we increase this, then we get that type of motion. So it's a very cool technique in, uh, in pigments. Usually some other synthesizers do it a little bit differently. But that's basically how you go about it for... Uh, uh, which we call for pigments. So, and you can always use the same LFO, right? You can drag this here to the fine. 
Let's go to our LFO here. So now what's kind of cool is this is going to be separate, right? So we have our, uh, the, uh, the filter cutoff is going to be macro one. However, for this one, you can do it for something else if you want to use the same LFO. So here we can go to side chain and then we can go to the mod wheel and go to one, right? Let's give it a little bit more depth so we can kind of hear this a little bit more. Something kind of crazy here or something like that. Mod wheels all the way up, as you can see here. Down. And then we can go to our high chain and also do the same thing with our mod wheel. Or if you want to set up a little bit differently, you can always use the same source here. So instead of the mod wheel, you can, or I guess instead of the macro one, you can also go to the mod wheel. So as you increase the mod wheel, and you bring this up, you can see this filter start moving and you can see the fine tuning start moving. So yeah, that's basically how these side chaining works. And like I said, keep in mind, there's a lot of different options to choose from. So start to be a little bit creative and see where it takes you. It's generally a, uh, a fun time. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video.